Hey guys, welcome to episode number four of the uh, the live stream with James Gregory. Hi guys. And myself, Charles Float. This is, as I said, episode number four of the live stream. Um, obviously, we had some creative technical difficulties last time, uh, so we didn't actually manage to get a proper episode out. So in response to that, we're going to make this episode a bit longer and a bit more detailed with a few more questions that yeah. we've answered. Um, we've chosen uh, about 10 of the best questions that you guys put in the Facebook group for us, um, as well as then once we got through all of them, hopefully we haven't gone past the uh, two hour mark what we were aiming to do this stream for. Uh, I'll go into the live stream, uh, check the chat, and kind of get some questions from you guys that you put out throughout the, uh, throughout the day there. So, uh, have you been up to anything recently, James? How's, how's it going? Uh, no, just generally been a you know, rankable website, selling yeah. the links. Um, and yeah, nothing new really uh, this week. Although one thing I've noticed is generally um, outreach links are kicking in a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, I've had some good results where within 12, 12 hours of sending links to a website, I'm seeing really big gains. We're talking from page six to like position eight and things like that. It's pretty like, crazy. It's, I don't know, Google have somehow just really turned up the, uh, the velocity and the freshness and they're just, you know, there has been some like pretty volatile movement, especially in the UK setups about a week ago or so. Yeah. Um, there was just it's just been kind of all over the place really. Yeah. I actually tweeted a link to it to uh, Semra's volatility chart, and in the UK it was going crazy. Yeah. Like a, a lot higher than uh, anything else kind of related to it. And just pretty much Google UK, Google Canada, um, normal USA Google links are just kicking in faster. You know, for me, um, and that's it. Really. Cool. Yeah. Usually it'd be like seven days. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, <laughs> so it, yeah. Be, <laughs> this experiment was literally from twelve hours. I saw really big gains to first page, which was just ridiculous. And we're talking only like five or ten links. It's pretty. That is pretty good. For, um, um, so should we move on to questions? Yeah, we have got quite a few questions to cover, so we'll just kind of get straight into it with you guys. Um, the first question comes from, and again. Once again, I'll actually uh, make sure that I don't butcher anyone's name, so I do apologize in the meantime. Uh, Thomas DeCastro asks, I know you have an outreach CRM database about 6,000 blogs, James. What, you, what, uh, what that you use for your own sites and clients, how did you start? What tools or techniques did you use, and how did it grow so big? Well, I was mainly able to leverage the database by buying them from various different sources of things. So I can't take credit for the database just being made by me because I'm able to leverage relationships and stuff within the community. But um, there is some great advice that I can give. For example, uh, Mailshake and Pitchbox, really good tools that you can use where you can basically throw in a load of URLs. They'll go ahead and source the emails for you. You've got built-in templates, and you can basically do the outreach within these platforms, plug your own persona and Gmail accounts in there. They'll suggest you to suggest your uh, best practices to use, and you can literally do, do your outreach, get your successful replies, and then what I then do, and what I do do is basically have a big Excel sheet mm -hmm. where I have the website, the email we use to contact them, the persona, I have the URL, um, have the stats, have the price, and, and, yeah, and that's basically how I keep track of it, by having VAs that are trained to maintain this database and leverage those two um, tools and Gmail accounts to then basically go out there and outreach to this to these websites. And there is other tools like Hunter.io and Scrapebox and stuff that you can actually go ahead and find the emails. Yeah. But just um, there's a little trick for finding the emails. Um, aim for contact forms because stuff like Hunter.io and Pitchbox Mail, Mailshake. The emails that you're getting, everybody else has access to. So everybody else doing mass outreach has access to them. So if you take the time out to find the personal contact details or hit up influencers on Twitter and things, yeah. you're going to get much higher success rate, cheaper guest post placements because those guys aren't getting completely bombarded daily with link requests. Um, and literally, that's how it's gotten so big. Leveraging various other platforms, so I can just literally buy the link for this much, sell it for more. And then just you know building a team, building the processes, and just mailing every single day, and being able to source big targets, mail them properly, and then manage them. Yeah, just having make relationships. Are yeah, the most important part. You know, and with stuff like Mailshake, they literally give you templates you can use, where you can go out there and email no, them. I don't know. know about using template. Like, yeah, if you wanted to build grow. Or big anyway, you kind of want the highest return rates possible. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, try, try to outreach on a personal level. Yeah. It's work a bit better than just yeah, bulk kind of stuff. And that, 
and I feel as if sometimes if you're going for like a spray and pray where you're literally made in hundreds and thousands, yeah. um, you can get away with using templates, niching down a little bit and then using um, the personalization, the mail merge type things that you can do um, and that does increase the return. But generally going as, per as personal as possible and taking the time out to find the best contact details the best email addresses that nobody else is hitting will get you the cheapest and best links, really. Yeah, the perfect person for to hit yeah. up with you. So hopefully, on, yeah. Thomas, that gives you enough to at least get started <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and get some outreach links. Definitely. Uh, the next question comes from William McConnell. He asks, what's the best way to migrate an e-commerce site to a new platform without losing rankings? So like if you were taking something yeah. like Magento or yeah. whatever to Shopify or probably the other way around, which is Shopify. Well, well I know you're more of an e-commerce guy and you'd be yeah. able to answer this a little bit better than me. Yeah, um, um, I think the, the main thing obviously is keeping the URLs that you want. So if a, a, lot, of CR, a lot of CMSs and CRMs uh, will have a different kind of uh, permalink setup. So you'll have to a lot of the time hard hard cop uh, sorry hard code yeah. or have a developer hard code um, as a way to actually make sure that you're maintaining the same URLs when you do the entire yeah. transport. So so it's better to keep the same URL structure yeah. rather than shorten them or go with the preferred platforms URLs. Um, uh, if if your site isn't, I think he was referring to big e-commerce websites. Yeah. And I think if you're kind of already doing hundred thousand a million dollars a month in revenue from an e-commerce yeah. website. Risking kind of changing your entire URL structure is probably a pretty bad idea. Yeah. But if you're doing at the lower end and you have the flexibility to be able to change them outright, then you can do three or one them to the new URL structure. Yeah. Like if you're getting sales from PPC and you kind yeah. of just get in there with SEO, you want to move exactly. to a different platform. And, and that and that change and the change that you're actually making in in whilst you're doing that will likely have a bigger effect in the long term. You might lose some short term earnings, yeah. but you will have a bigger effect in the long term on doing that. That being said, though, if you are doing a big big site. 100% don't change the URL structure and things because you're just going to screw everything up. And a really good one to do as well is as soon as you've moved uh, the site and as soon as you change things around, you move the content around, do the biggest freaking link building campaign you can get your hands on yeah. just so that it makes Google's crawl rate go through the roof. If you can, you can actually, uh, wait, before you do the move uh, to the live environment, so most, if you're doing if you're doing e-commerce SEO and e-commerce development, you yeah. should never really do it on the, you should never do edits on the live site because your majority of the time have something go wrong or one thing go wrong, and that can lead to weeks or months of recovery from people. Yeah, so if you do it all on a test website, yeah, you can if see anything goes happens, wrong with a migration exactly. or whatever, any issues you face, because you will face issues pretty yeah, much every time. Yeah, it's, it's almost especially guaranteed. With, especially with problems. huge stores as well. Yeah. If all of a sudden your categories don't work, you literally <laughs> yeah. lose revenue, so exactly. that's like key. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, making sure that you move it properly. Um, and then once you've actually got it live, like I said, do the link building campaign, that will just make sure that you've got the crawl rate is going as high as possible because Google based a lot of its crawl budget and its crawl uh, weight will have it, however much you want to kind of change the keywords for it. Yeah. Um, Google bases a lot of that on how many links you've got going to your website and your kind of velocity. So it's more about your relevancy, not the actual niche relevancy, but your relevancy across your competitors. So if you've got 100 links going to your website in the last week, then you'll probably be a lot more relevant in the modern day than your than your competitor that has got ten, um, and you'll likely get a higher crawl rate. So making sure you're, making sure that any changes that you do make have got new links to them, and where you can trying to make quick wins with the on page when you actually move the site, so yeah. adding more content to descriptions, uh, yeah. just doing basic things that. Yeah, you can yeah. Get so obviously, on. if you're going to migrate the website, yeah, if, and you're going to lose your rankings, try and improve the existing SEO exactly, to give yeah. you the best fighting chance. Yeah. For example, if you do have to uh, three or one and everything, mm -hmm. um, and it is literally a case as well. Just to follow up on that, go into Webmaster Tools once you've migrated to see if there's any four or fours or any blog yeah, posts exactly. and things. Yeah. Because those are other issues that you're going to face when moving. And over. you'll literally have a chart which says, "Oh, look, today you moved, and you went. You got a huge amount of warnings and things." And yeah. stores. I'd go through that and take that as a warning sign. Like, yeah, and probably. maybe do like a little audit of the things that are going to change. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, and look, export your index pages, export. Um, yeah. So what that will do is will give you a warning of. You know, some CMSs are really funny, like WooCommerce, where they start indexing tags and yeah. stuff. And, and what you don't want is you don't want all of those just all of a sudden not exist. What 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 we normally do as well is we run Screaming Frog or you know something of the likes like Meta Forensics, uh, Cloud the Cloud one as well. Yeah. Um, and then we run something like that before we do the site move, and then once the site move is live, we run it again just to basically do a side by side comparison of what's changed. Yeah. Um, that's probably like the, the best way to do. Yeah. That kind of stuff. 
but yeah, just making sure that you kind of keep everything the same as long as you're not doing it too differently and making quick wins where you can. Uh, and make sure the actual update is fine. I've literally seen someone, um, we, we worked with a client and they got SSL installed onto yeah. their domains. But it's, for some reason, the development company behind it decided to make every single one of those HTTP, HTTPS 302s yeah. rather than 301s. Oh, wow. And yeah, literally passing absolutely no link juice and their rankings dropped by 50% in like a day. So it's just just making sure that you have little bits and pieces and you're on top of whoever is doing the development move because they do it's it's ideal to have a developer that is versed in SEO yeah because you can just kind of screw screw it all yeah, um, yeah anyway I hope that answers your question yeah. in quite a lot of detail uh, the next question comes from a guy called Gavin Jackson and Gavin asks what well his first question is what is the best website for West website audio software or do you just do it manually. Um, the, audit best, software. the best audit software, really, I stick to technical tools like Screaming Frog. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll use um, there's this um, Trello board called the Trello One Hour SEO Audit, and mm -hmm. it basically has a tickable, tickable system where you go through on page, off page, brand, you know, searching for different mentions and things like that. Where you, and it's basically um, an intricate way of seeing loads of processes that you might have missed and that software would miss. And using stuff like Screaming Frog to fill in every single little detail. Yeah, yeah. So I'd like to. It's called the One Hour SEO Audit. If you just search Trello SEO Audit, you'll find it. It's like the top, the top of Google, and it gives you pretty much everything for you to look at, and then tick as you go along. Yeah, um, yeah. And and that's how I do it. So a mixture of Screaming Frog software and then going through that Trello sheet. And if it's under a fine Trello website, that entire thing is free as well. Because <laughs> Trello is free with the free audit. Yeah. And the uh, Screaming Frog under five hundred dollars is free as well. Paid. But yeah. I would recommend that all SEOs have a um, Oh yeah, it's like a full license like Screaming Frog. Yeah. yeah, it's a really yeah. good piece of software. There's loads yeah. of like, uh, codes floating around as well. But <laughs> <laughs> I think it's better to just purchase it. Um, yeah, it probably is. Um, the next yeah. question as well from Gavin as well. What are your thoughts on ranking rent sites and lead gen sites? I know me and you have a slightly different opinion on uh, rank and rent and lead yeah. gen, whereas you prefer um, lead generation sites being paper lead, yeah, whereas yeah. I prefer rank and rent. Um, the reason why I love rank and rent is purely for the fact that there's a really low barrier to entry. You can make a website for a city or a town with barely any people, and you can pretty much rank instantly <laughs> with little to no link building, and you can rent that out for a couple hundred quid a month. You, you, if you have a family member, you can easily get them a bit of extra work and things. So I love that this, this uh, business model versus affiliate because you can just get started straight away and you can rank with just citations and one or two PBM links. But the reason why I prefer rank and rent to lead gen is the fact that with lead gen and uh, pay per lead, uh, let's say, is you have to bill per lead, which means constant back and forth with the person that's renting yeah, out the website. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you don't know the industry too well, it's going to be lots of you know bickering the client, whereas rank and rent is a flat free every single month. I can put all my energy and time into building more websites, and mm. it's much easier to have you know 100 websites doing a couple hundred quid a month, and it's like 30, 50k a month. Yeah, and it's pretty much minimal because all you're managing is the uh, the monthly rentals. So you just have a team managing dealing with these people and to rent them out, it, to make sure rather, them. Yeah, rather yeah. than having... Um, I, I, I do get what you're saying, but at the same time, because it's a flat fee, yeah. you have to build more websites, whereas you can just have one or two. For, like, for example, if you're ranking for like solar in the UK, like solar, solar panels in the UK, yeah. one lead, paper lead, you can get for like you get £500, two, yeah. 250 pounds, 500 pounds, that's like $400 to like $700, $750. And if you can keep on expanding that site more and more, and yeah. that will be the equivalent each for each lead that you're selling, which you could do one, three, five a day, would be the same as having one rank from inside. Yeah, but but I, but it is a I lot easier to I get. I feel as if um, and you do need more investment. Yeah, initially. I think that's that's the key. When I started with rank and rent, I didn't have a lot of capital to go out yeah. there and build a huge national website for paper lead that's going to make me you know, thousands monthly or even daily yeah. um, for what you've mentioned some leads go for. So being able to just get citations, 10 PBN links. Um, I actually did a post on ranking local SEO websites yeah. back in the day, and you could literally rank one of these websites for $22. <laughs> so the fact that you can just get started and make money straight away is why I thought that was more attractive. Whereas now, with the resources I have access to, maybe I could switch more for a paper lead model because yeah. I, I do have that upfront uh, investment. The capital. Yeah, yeah, so I feel as if, Gavin, if you're – 
have a lot of capital to invest and you want to make a real long term you know brand that covers lots of cities covers you know really competitive industries go for paper lead but if you're literally just starting out then maybe rank and rent yeah. for easier things <laughs> just to get the confidence of actually ranking a website and rent it out to someone before you then start spending thousands and just make sure as well you do your niche research as well because like I, I spoke about this last week someone made a, a pool cleaning website that was local and none of the companies locally wanted to buy it. It was ranked number one, but none of yeah. them wanted to rent it because they didn't see the value in having a site ranking. Even if, I think it had 120 month searches, yeah. and it was getting like two or three and leads a which, week. Which country was this? Uh, it was in the US. It, it was, was in the US, yeah. US yeah. It was, it, I think it was somewhere in Florida or something. Yeah. Um, and it, it had two or three leads a week. Yeah. And I said to him, look, why don't you just sell those paper lead and, leads and, and as leads? But for, but, uh, for pool cleaning, that could be seasonal. That yeah, could just yeah, be exactly. when people are, have their family yeah. around, they're going in the pool, they hire a pool cleaner to come and clean it yeah, exactly. you know, for the family barbecue and stuff. So if you're making that website at Christmas and things where it's, yeah, it's, and you're looking to make money, it's going to be one of those things that's only making money you know, through the summer, through the spring months or mm -hmm. when it's hot. Yeah. Um, so if you're going to do and ranking, you're around, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just about research and making sure that you actually can, you will be able to sell it. Otherwise, you just set up a website that's potentially cost you at least a few hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, and, you, and you just won't be able to. And that's like when people do a heating website, heating repair website. Yeah. And they do an air conditioner site. Like, why not do both? Yeah. And then you you've got both of the seasons covered. Yeah. Um, as people prepare and as people have breakdowns, emergencies and stuff. So definitely do your research, Gavin, uh, before going into any any of these models. And you know, don't do a pool cleaning website in Alaska, yeah. or don't do an air conditioning um, website in Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. The next question comes from Stuart Donlup, who asks, uh, "Are blogspot sites good for links?" So I think he means dot blogspot dot yeah. sites because there's a lot of uh, services that have been selling them recently. Yeah, but there's you know there's kind of a, um, a different type of blogspot links. There's yeah. well, there's three different types. There's expired ones that you can go out there pick up that have existing link juice. Yeah. There's fresh ones which I think most people are selling, which I think are a little bit useless. Yeah, fresh, fresh, fresh ones. Really if they don't have links them. pointing at them and no index yeah. age, but then there's a third category which I would recommend doing, which is really aged. Authority blog spots. Yeah. For example, I've had several law links from like DA50, Trustflow50, sorry, PA55, Trustflow, you know, like 50, 60, yeah. just from law websites on the blog spot domain. And those, those and ones are crazy. Well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, know, I know Todd was actually speaking about that, that he was reaching out to blog spot owners and uh, paying like $10 a link yeah. to $30 a link. And they were doing wonders because he could buy 50, 60 of them. But just make sure, like you said, that they're from sites yeah. that are actual real blogspot sites well, that actually there have is, links. There is one tip I'll give if you guys want to find real blogspot websites. Plug in blogspot.com in Arefs and export all the backlinks and yeah, sort yeah, yeah. by so, sort by the target page that are subdomains dot blogspot. Mm -hmm. And then you'll literally have the best backlinks possible, pointing at the blogspot pages, and then export yeah, all those. Zero high, uh, export all of those. You know, majestic, um, majestic. Run them, rerun them through Ahrefs, and just you'll be left with the most legit and highest quality blogspot uh, websites to get links from. So, yeah, 100%. a little tip there, guys. <laughs> and, and as well with blogspot, as well, every single theme that blogspot uses, it shows the full front page, home page, yeah, uh, home page post. So as long as the blog gets updated, maybe once a week. For a few weeks, you actually have a homepage link from that blog spot going straight back to your site, which is obviously going to be exactly like a PVN would. So it's going to be the exact kind of yeah. effect, getting the, home, the raw homepage power as well as the actual in internal link. And then what, maybe once it's fallen off the homepage, yeah. then you can do some tier two stuff as well with it just to kind of retain that power that it had before. Yeah. But, you know, when we're talking about blog spot sites, the, the thing to, you know, to, that's important is the fact that is it an aged one that has good backlinks pointing at it, or yeah. is it just a fresh one that someone's made and put spun content on it and they're selling okay. it for ten dollars? So Stuart, if you're going to buy them, ensure they're from real people that have been around for a long time yeah. with good links pointing at them. Don't buy them from all the Facebook marketplaces or Conquer and things like that. <laughs> that are literally like five hundred blogspot links that someone's made yeah. with automated tools. They are they are useless. Yeah, they are useless. Um, yes. Yeah. So yeah. And uh, the next question comes from my favorite name in the community. Xander the Great asks, how do you go about choosing domains for a PBN slash SEO purposes? So how do you go about choosing PBN domains? Like what kind of metrics do you look yeah. for and et cetera? Well, not, not necessarily metrics, yeah. but like uh, contextual backlinks. You know, yeah, and, and I, I, think, I think we talked about this last week when we yeah. talked about metrics where we're looking, does the website have real backlinks? 
Yeah. Um, does it have? Um, I think someone asked, uh, "Is it okay to choose PVN domains that have all have directory links?" That sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we we delved into the metrics and stuff. Yeah. And you know, when I'm choosing domains, I'm looking at the name of the domain. Yeah. You know, for example, when you're repurposing the website to be used as a mini site or domain, if it's like really long, yeah, or it doesn't fit completely, like there's a guy who I'm building, you know, thousands monthly, thousands monthly worth of links for, and his website is about birth control. <laughs> But he's literally ranking for skin creams and stuff. It ranks really well, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But as a from a brand standpoint, it looks completely yeah, spammy and bizarre. Low click through rates myself. Yeah. So yeah. You know, about it as well potentially. Yeah. So people are looking for uh, are looking for this particular thing. This ranks well, and they look at the around thinking, "What birth control?" <laughs> and then he's ranking, you know, weightlifting supplements, <laughs> f uh, weight loss pills, and stuff from this domain. It's not very so, trusted from the user perspective. Yeah. So definitely, the name is it brandable? Um, can you then um, use it as a money site if it's not brandable? I can use it as a PBM because there's less chance someone's actually going to see it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, true. And literally, just the metrics we spoke about last week, which is the quality of the backlinks, majestic trust flow, ARES referring domains, yeah. um, even d domain rating. And mm. then to actually manually look through the links yourself as yeah. well. Like, that's the main thing. A lot of people just buy domains, they run them through majestic. And yeah. then they're like, I want this TF5, I want this TF10, etc. And then you're just like, but you didn't even look at any of the yeah. backlinks to that website. After. See, I would actually look at the backlinks tab on Majestic and look at the yeah. root domain trust flow metrics mm -hmm. as well, and actually look at which page the links are sitting on. Yeah, and if it's just a domain that's getting and one link, link. Yeah. yeah, if it's just getting one like sidebar link from yeah. a, a strong website, and all the rest of the links are zero trust flow directory links, don't choose that domain. <laughs> yeah. Just go for domains that were quite clearly a real website that got yeah. real contextual links. Um, and those are pretty much the most important things, I guess, when yeah. choosing. I don't know if there's anything else really. That's mainly, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the next question comes from, he's got actually two questions. It's from Mark Visser, asks, what do you think the difference is with reviving content from the archive versus new content? I know this will probably be your yeah. speciality here. Well, this is something, you know, I, content. Yeah, I, I did for years. Um, I was selling content as a service where I'd go in the archive, scrape all of the pages, yeah. Um, I think you know I still have an Excel file of maybe three hundred million domains. <laughs> um, well, not an Excel file, a text file of three hundred million domains, where I'd literally go in there and take out URLs that have this certain certain uh, topic, run them all through archive, and get all the articles. And then I was, you know, going through making sure it wasn't indexed in Google or ever used. Um, it's like copy scape. Yeah, like it was it. almost like copy scape checking, but generally googling snippets of it to see if yeah. it was never on the internet. And I do think there is a slight difference in, um, you know, in ranking ability. Um, and I feel as if the reason why that is, is that maybe Google doesn't forget as much as we might think. That's the only yeah. thing I can put it down on. Google, Google cache. yeah, Google must cache things even when it's de-indexed. I think they, they must say, I think in yeah. the videos they said two years was the kind of how long they keep cache. And it's only, but the thing is. The savings that I was making using revived content meant that I was using, you know, fifty PBN links instead of instead of like five or ten. Yeah. So I can't then really compare five PBN links to fifty PBN links because obviously even with revived content they were outperforming previously with five. Yeah. Um, and I feel as if that do revive content still to build out the PBNs and ensure it's never been on the internet, you know, for yeah. recently, um, the passes copy escape and everything. But if you're going to do uh, PBN posts and stuff, maybe do a fresh post just because I'm not quite sure if Google does do actually forget it, even after two years, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, Google's got the like, so probably So I, I do think new content is king. New high quality content, but English native is the best. But obviously, when, you know, that's not affordable for doing SEO yeah, projects and books. Yeah, especially PBN. But I well. think that revived content is better. Than you know, Indian content, Filipino content, in the fact that it was written by real people in industry, yeah, 100%, and yeah. if you get longer form pieces of content, yeah. I was doing three thousand. Did you ever words. use it for money sites? Um, see, this the, the only time I ever used it for money sites is if I was to register the domain again and restore the original content. Okay, yeah. And what I was doing for money sites is I was rewriting it slightly. So obviously, if it was about a different company, any mention of the company or area, I was rewriting it. So just putting into iWrite to it. Really yeah. So one of the it. so one of the biggest techniques that I did was um, getting these old domains that were real businesses, revived content, and then 
bringing the content back to life on my own rank and rent domain to bring it back to the, how I was able to scale <laughs> the rank and rent and then just doing some slight edits to the content. It would literally take me like 15, 20 minutes yeah, yeah. and it was almost, almost like, you know, 20, 30% more unique than it was previously. So yeah. that's a little hack that you can do. But generally there is a difference between archive content and new content. In but, terms of their ranking ability. Yeah, in terms of ranking ability, probably because yeah. we don't know if Google does keep a cache of this content. Yeah, and I know how this, long for. But there's people out there like Josh Boydston that have done like 500 plus PBN posts <laughs> at one website with just revived content. He's built out authoritative farmer websites. I don't know if you knew recently yeah, that. Yeah. He literally got his farmer website shut down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 500 plus so yeah. revived. Um, and even blog posts as well, he was user of and it was ranking like crazy. Yeah. And I just think the quality of the content, the long form, it, it hadn't been online for ages, and you know, the quality and the sheer mass of links. But there is a difference. It's just, the, it's just the affordability of it. Yeah, it's the affordability. But I do think go for new content where you can. And if you're yeah. going to do this for money sites, definitely change it up. Yeah. It's a great way to scale on a budget, and it's better than Indian and Filipino content, but you know. For, for PBN posts and things, I'd probably still recommend getting new content. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's all about the yeah. ROI, basically. Yeah, yeah it's all about the ROI. ROI. Um, there is definitely a difference. Cool. Okay, Mark Visser also asked a second question. Uh, do you think topically changing PBNs, so actually changing the niche relevancy of them, especially more than once, so changing the topical yeah. relevancy of them more than once, will lose power on the domain? Well, the thing is, people say it won't lose power, but if you think about it, you have a PBN domain about weightlifting. Yeah. All of the backlinks going into that domain are about weightlifting. So now all those index pages that have index age, index power authority are about weightlifting. They point to your website about weightlifting. All of a sudden, your content does not match weightlifting. You have a disadvantage because you're now trying to rank for other things. Even though they pass authority, the relevance isn't there. Yeah. So it's almost like um, Google can't follow the trail but they can follow the link juice. Yeah. So 100% hands down from that analogy, there, you are gonna lose power changing the topic. I'm not sure if you agree. Yeah. Purely 100%. because contextually and thematically, it doesn't make, does it make sense, sense anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. Why would all these weightlifting websites are linked to this weightlifting domain? This weightlifting website is now ranking about, you know, um, cars or about cars yeah, or yeah. law <laughs> and things. Fair enough, it was still around health and fitness. That yeah. could make sense because Google would then cluster that content semantically because those people who have linked out weightlift on their weightlifting page could blog about health and fitness. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense there. But if you're going to completely do a backwards U-turn and start doing random things on there, you are going to lose power because of the relevance. Yeah. And obviously that's why niche relevant PBNs and stuff are so powerful versus flat yeah. authority. I, I, I do think it is important. Like you said, keeping it within the same kind of niche cluster, yes. Yeah. Um, if you're going to completely repurpose and uh, a domain, then you will need to build at least start building new links to it, yeah. Or building uh, kind of the site out and waiting, you know, potentially months for it to yeah. actually be a linkable asset or an asset that you can link from to your money site. Um, but yeah, if realistically, just try and stick to it as niche relevant as possible. And if you're doing it more than once, so if you actually try and change the topic more than yeah. once, Repurposing. where you're changing it from like, like I said, like weight loss to law to yeah, like something else, it's just going to end pretty badly for the uh, for the kind of quality of the links that you're going to be getting from those domains. Um, and yeah, it's just going to kind of weaken that domain yeah. to the point where it's almost useless. And potentially, if Google, if it triggers something within Google's anti-spam algorithm, yeah. then it could very, very quickly turn south and actually be a negative. And I, I feel as if with stuff like the Fred and Panda updates that are coming out, it's literally quality. Yeah. And doing stuff like that is extremely low quality. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, where this would be okay is if it's a travel website talking about a particular area. Yeah. Now, if you have a website about an area and you're talking about businesses within that area, and all those links are coming in and talking about the areas. Yeah, well, yeah, to keep it to the area specific. Yeah, PBNs. so yeah, area specific fun. PBNs, travel PBNs, or even general blogs where people are talking about all sorts. Yeah, like mommy blogs. Yeah. yeah. Then you have a little bit more leeway with that kind of relevance. And, you know, to be honest, right now in 2017, you can go. And get 500 referring domain weight loss um, PBN, and you know you can rank it for law and things. But how long that's going to work, and is it going to make sense long term with the quality updates? Then you don't know. So, yeah. so you do lose a little bit of power, and they definitely do work still. But is it worth it long term? Um, probably not. Probably yeah. best to just keep everything niche relevant, and that will be 
the most powerful network you could possibly yeah. have. And to be honest, I don't see why you have to completely change the topics when a topic cluster can mean so many different yeah. things. Weightlifting can mean anything to do with health and fitness, yeah. you know. Um, criminal, you know, certain criminal law can be converted to family law and other aspects of yeah, that yeah, aspect. Yeah. It's still in the whole law cluster. Yeah. Um, and if it is tech, for example, you've got great opportunity there because mobile oh, yeah. phones, um, you know, SEO, yeah, yeah, SEO web, repair companies, Bitcoins, Google cluster software. topics that in that type of way, yeah. you know, it can't niche down too much. But then even when you do niche down to hyper specific, you do notice even more. Yeah, more power. It's almost yeah. like there's a relevancy score. The more the relevancy score is higher, the higher they're the, going to rank. Well, it's, it's how Google does the quality score for uh, PPC. Yeah. So if you have if you're if you have an advert, they'll literally say how relate how what what's the quality score of this keyword versus this page, and what's saying that Google doesn't use that exact same method against yeah against exactly. SEO pages. Yeah, and they've got yeah. so much fresh data. They've got you know yeah. since since it's the nineties of content and you know. <laughs> machine learning and things like that. They've got so much to work with in terms of you know how to structure and things. Yeah. It's worth just trying to be as relevant as possible and make sense and realistically. Long term as well. Yeah, you don't need, if you're gonna do gray hat, try and blend in as white hat, you know? Yeah. And then you'll just be future proof and bulletproof yeah. um, for, for Google updates, you know? And uh, the last question on our kind of pre-formatted questions list, and then we'll get to your guys' live chat questions in a minute, because I have seen like the live chat going a bit crazy. Um, this actually comes from last week's last week, week or last month's live stream. Sorry, that, like, no, two weeks ago's live stream. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and he basically Chronix Games or Cron One KX Games <laughs> asks, how do you do Parasite SEO for local? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, you know, I think that when people talk about Parasite SEO, they're talking about reputation management and things. But yeah. local, you can really cause some damage in a search, especially if they're not the main, the main phrases. Yeah. If they're the less uh, competition service phrases and things, you can literally go out there and put the key phrases in your Yelp profiles, your Yelp profiles. Yeah. So if you're getting um, citations from people at like PBM Butler and things, and your brand mentions these key phrases, you, you, can literally, you can literally point links at every single citation, and whichever yeah. one pops up first, you can then just start ranking all those. Yeah. You can then start doing YouTube videos for every single service and ranking all those YouTube, uh, YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Press releases. Um, yeah. Again, just make sure that the press release site is kind of at least relevant. Yeah, it, it, and, and you can literally put the press release site that the press release is on into SEMrush and see if it's had a drop or if it's see what yeah. the traffic is looking like. Yeah, look at the anchor text as well. You literally yeah. look at press release platforms yeah. and you'll see your report. You'll put it in Majestic and you'll see it's just got like random like. Uh, money robot review key <laughs> phrases and stuff spammy like SEO automated tool um, phrases Viagra phrases yeah. people are literally taking advantage of these platforms getting a seven dollar press release and then just spamming the hell out of them to take yeah. advantage of the rankings and obviously that would correlate what you've said about checking it for it on several yeah, yeah, yeah. so where it's going to drop yeah and that's that's the best way to see if Parasite is worth it or not yeah. getting it recently because if, if it's got a good chart that goes up Perfect. It'll be a good. It'll be a good ranking platform. If it's got a massive drop off, like if you go and look at Blogspot's, uh, no, not sorry, Blogspot's one. If you go and look at um, Rebel Mouse, etc., then you'll see that actually Rebel Mouse had a massive drop when Google yeah. obviously clocked onto the Paris SEO that everyone was using Rebel Mouse for, um, and then they did it on various other platforms as well. Yeah, and you know to to flip that completely and look at how Parasites uh, drop, you can literally look at Semrush and you can see the top performing domains. Yeah completely in Google USA. Mm -hmm. So you can see all these new parasite platforms, you know, creeping up as well that are completely untouched. And from that date you can see straight away that YouTube is a number one parasite SEO platform mm -hmm. period. It's probably you know one of Google's biggest you know, um, secondary companies. Yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously they're gonna really is the biggest. Yeah, they're gonna turn up the value. For example, when we do these events, our names rank really well yeah. in Google. So if you're doing um, you know like the Google Hangout things to rank the website as well, setting the videos to a certain format, you can take advantage of all these algorithms yeah. to just you know rank. You can take advantage of the fact that YouTube is owned by Google, and every single platform like Arefs and Semrush say that YouTube is the best performer yeah. across all of you know Google and all search engines. Mm -hmm. To then take advantage and put all your parasite activities on it. Yeah. Now, I would just literally triple down on just YouTube for local, to be honest. Yeah. Um, well, I, well, I also think about. If you because you can have choose the URLs on the yeah. page and things. So if you actually or, and another Twitter one as well, as well. another yeah. one that shows up really high in Google in terms of Facebook. Yeah, Facebook pages. Yeah, so YouTube, Facebook pages, 
and then almost if you have the budget, go ahead and do your go ahead and do your parasite. Yeah. But there's one thing that I read earlier that um, Matt Diggity had um, had paid, posted on his timeline, which I think is even better um, than Parasite SEO, which is basically to make satellite websites yeah. and take over the whole of page one. Yeah. Or it's a lot easier to rank a, uh, a website when you know exactly how many links you require. Um, yeah, if you're already ranking your website well, then yeah. you can just do the exact same kind of strategy that you did on another website, yes. and they, that will rank well as well. Yeah, so if you completely take advantage of the whole of page one with just your YouTube videos, your Facebook profiles, and your second, yeah. and if you make your second brand, or let's say for example, if you don't want to hurt your client by changing all the citation stuff to make them really spammy mm -hmm. and exact match to rank for the phrases, make a secondary brand for them, similar price and similar copy and everything, but make their website brand contain the key phrases, almost yeah. exact match. So all the citations and all the properties, you can spam them as well. So all of a sudden, the only competitor is you, and you have two YouTube videos, potentially three or four YouTube videos with your other brands, and then you've got your your, um, your yells, all your citations, and your Facebook pages ranking as well because your brand is the, uh, is, the actual, is the key phrase. So exactly. that would be the best way to do. That would be the best way to do parasite SEO for local. You know, and if your if your brand isn't the EMD. Then pick up the EMD as well. Yeah, to make another satellite site. Yeah, so, yeah or, and PMD and everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you make sure you have multiple sites. Right? Yeah. Talk to you about satellite. And sites. then just just one thing: if you guys are going to go out there and do that, be careful and don't start burning all your PBN assets and stuff by linking to all the same websites. Um, you know that might be a little bit risky if you're going to do things like that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, William McConnell asks in reply to his question, which I think was here, uh, and he said, "Thanks for the in-depth reply, lads." Any kind, any idea of it costs for you guys to do instead of to do it instead of me? <laughs> um, I'm sure. I'm sure. If they they content on your website, you'd be able to. Yeah. You yeah if you, if well, uh, we wouldn't personally do any kind of small rank for websites or anything, um, but we can help with consulting to give you kind of like a more formulated strategy. You're on my blog, Charles Lloyd, Complete Case Slash Consulting, and you'll be able to go that, with that there. Um, and the next question, and we are moving on to the live stream now. So if you have any questions, go onto the live stream and check in the chat. Be able to ask all your questions there, and we'll try and get through as many as we can tonight. Um, we are going to be on for like another 50 minutes or so, so we'll be here for a while. Awesome. Uh, uh, the first one comes from Entrepreneurate Consulting. If a PBN gets hit, what do you think will happen to the site it's pointing to? So, basically, if yeah. you see a PBN at D index, will that link be negatively impacting the site? Yeah, I've, I've yeah. actually ex experienced this before, mm -hmm. and I've literally lost 22 PBNs um, from a PBN hosting platform. Well, um, free and from from there, I said, yeah. don't RG use people. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who <laughs> <laughs> maybe don't mention the name. Uh, <laughs> we uh, so I lost twenty two websites, and my rankings didn't go down. In fact, really? my in fact my rankings went up, <laughs> which makes which leads me to believe that the PBN domains and the ad set that were probably shocking anyway. <laughs> yeah. But I'd lost those twenty two domains, yeah. and they were pretty much like fifty percent of my link profile, and my rankings went up. Yeah. So I was like rank four, and all of a sudden I went up to rank two. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> So I literally just removed all the domains off the hosting yeah. and didn't bother renewing them. And um, and yeah, and my rankings, you know, they went from two to four. I think I think algorithmically, you won't ever really see any negative effect on negative yeah. links. Um, it, it's just purely well, Google, yeah. Google will probably say that you'll have negative negative impact if it's an algorithm if your domains are algorithmically hit. So if Google thinks your domains are PBNs. And kind of doesn't de-index them, but they kind of disassociate them or whatever. But is if you get if you get a manual penalty against PBN links, yeah. so if your PBNs actually get manually penalised, then I think it's yeah, they have a problem. They could then look at every website you're linking out to and yeah, see exactly. what kind of tactics they're employing, yeah. and obviously punish your money websites as a result of using this SEO tactic. Yeah. So uh, yeah, algorithm. You know, you, it brings you back to the second episode where I mentioned you can't control who links to you. Yeah. Exactly. So if you have a couple like. <laughs> Say homepage links that are really high quality. Well, you know, I don't know how they got there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> someone just sent me these. Sorry, guys, these are my overall link profile. So if you lose one or two PBN links and you're using, you know, outreach links, you've got really high quality citations, you've got really high quality mm -hmm. blog comments. If you've diverse diversified to the point where you're not relying on one SEO tactic, you're not going to see a. Um, yeah, it becomes a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, if your whole link profile is PBNs, they all get penalised overnight. Yeah. There's a good chance your rankings would drop. Mm -hmm. um, but if you've literally diversified and one or two PBNs drop off, then just don't worry about it really. And another thing as well, if your PBN does get de indexed, rather than doing what I did, which is panic and take them all offline, um, mm -hmm. a lot of people just, just leave them up. They leave the PBN pointing to the website 
um, rather than saying to Google, look, I know that you've penalized me, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove this link now yeah. and take the website offline um, just so it doesn't hurt this money website and this is the website. That, you know, that could very much well be a rule to say this person's manipulating the SERPs. Yeah, 100%. Um, and there's one thing as well what lead, would lead me to believe that it's not instant, um, the negative connotations, which is link ghosting, whereas mm -hmm. if you gain a link... Um, you might take a while for to see the benefits, or you might see benefits straight away. But if you remove the link, websites go offline all the time. Yeah. Or if they're de-indexed forever, so Google might wait a while to refresh the negative um, aspect. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. negative impacts of lost links. Yeah. Um. You know, or even like, like ghosting yeah, links. Yeah. It might it might be different for de-index, but you know, potentially it could be that you are going to see negative benefits in the future. So if you if you've been de-indexed by for exact match PBN links or partial match links, it would make sense to go ahead and build like eight high quality pillow links and then go ahead yeah. and build around the anch anchored strategy some higher quality PBNs that aren't just going to get taken off. Yeah, get so, that, so that in a couple of months, if you do get a negative um, com you know, result from that being the index, you've already seen positive uplift from the new yeah. uh, link building. You've almost, like the algorithm's almost forgotten about those yeah. links there yeah. because you've got so much new data for it to consume and work out. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully that um, answers your question. Yeah. Uh, the next question comes from Skylands, and uh, I think it's a lady. Hi, Sky. Uh, how, how much time do you spend trying to improve engagement signals compared to link building and pushing traffic through backlinks? Um, so engaging things like social signals. Yeah, and I, I, CTR. You see, I, I think it's funny when people say things like engagement signals yeah. and like these fluffy words that are just basically saying. You know how many times are you spending making your website look decent so people actually stay on it? Yeah. And you know that should be. So that should be your number one factor, really. SEO should kind of be, I guess, you know, you need the traffic in there, but you know, people do neglect the actual website. Aspect. Yeah, yeah. You I've seen some WordPress themes. I've seen certain. some horrendous websites yeah. because all these courses say, "Oh, just use a default theme and just throw this up." <laughs> you wait for fine. it to rank and then yeah, do the design. Yeah. But then as soon as it ranks, you've got like a one hundred percent bounce rate, and Google just knocks you back down again. Yeah. Yeah. So literally, um, and the question. So did Sky ask how much time do we spend on engagement factors rather than link building? Yeah. Um, and literally, it should be 50-50. Make the website yeah. is engaging, the content amazing. Do, you know, invest in CRO 100%. If you're going to spend like $500 on a CRO consultant, <laughs> increases your conversion rate by a couple percent, yeah. and you're making thousands, the returns are crazy. Mm -hmm. so don't be scared to spend money on CRO. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it is literally 50% of my activity is spent making sure the website looks amazing. Yeah, 100%. And you know, what, what hooks I can use, um, Matt Diggity, uh, recently posted um, about hooks that you put on, on the, the like opening paragraph, you know, what lead magnets can you yeah, use, yeah. the opening paragraph, is it engaging to yeah, get yeah, them yeah. to read it further, spend time on that and you'll notice that all of a sudden link building is a lot easier yeah. and it's easier to rank because Google's getting so much yeah. good feedback from all your visitors that, you know, there's something good going on here, show it higher because people would love Google more yeah. if everyone's having a really good party over here on your website, you know, <laughs> and having a really shit time when you compare it to and, and I think if you have ordered uh, review content for your money sites, or if you've ordered content jumping for money sites, and those are money pages of people landing on, let's say you've ordered 3,000 words, just go through and rewrite the first 500 yeah. or so yourself. You don't have to rewrite the entire thing whatsoever. Yeah. Just what you think people will likely read, which is likely the first two or three paragraphs, yeah. And then people don't really read beyond that unless it's something that's really you know, interesting to them, you know, like SEO. Oh, it's interesting. I was speaking about the uh, the birth control website earlier, how, yeah. how how they rank for all these phrases. And one thing they do, which I thought was slightly aggressive, but, you know, as we talk about the engagement facts, I can see how it, how it works. It's on Fry, they have this big red alert box at the top, yeah. which says, note, this review has been personally tested by our writer, yeah. which he for, you know, which he found amazing effects from this particular pill, but he found the effects were slightly too powerful to the point of, you know, it was uncomfortable for him to wear um, wear clothing because he was so sweaty and things like that. <laughs> Literally, he was making out all these problems were so bad about this weight loss product that he was so powerful yeah. that he, you know, for someone that's not versed in using this, it's a little bit, a little bit too hardcore, guys. I wouldn't recommend reading on it and you know ordering this product because yeah. if you can't handle it, it's going to be a and little bit too much. People psychology are like, hold my beer. And like, Hang on a sec. I've tried everything, and this <laughs> this stuff is literally makes me sweat to the point where I can't wear grey clothes. Oh my god, I'm going to read this and buy. Yeah. So literally, a big alert box to say, this is not a third party review. This is done by this person. If you can't handle it, you know, 
I wouldn't recommend reading yeah, further. Away I it. literally thought that this was completely risky and just <laughs> disqualified everybody from purchasing it. But you know, as I think, I'm like, hang on a second. <laughs> this like sucker mom that's reading this is like, oh my god, I've tried everything. This is going to be perfect. So I'd be very I bet curious. Rate's pretty high yeah, I'd be right. very com- com- you know curious to see um, you know what his conversion rate is. You know. And in comparison, if you tested it, but taking yeah, off split, yeah, it. split testing it, yeah. but you know, straight away a bigger red, a red alert box. The first thing I thought when I saw red was, look, stop this danger. <laughs> I need to read this. You know, I, I and it's funny because when I look at his other page, I don't do this. I'm like, oh, this is just text, and I just want <laughs> to go. I just want to go back to the other page. Had this big red box. Yeah, that's really, consumer, consumer yeah, it's really, really yeah. interesting. You know, I'm not someone that no, really notices things like that. You know, I pay CRO. CRO well, guys yeah. to do this. Speak, well, speaking of CRO, um, Kurt Phillips, who is probably one of the best CROs in, in the SEO community, is doing a guest post on my blog in yeah. two days. So, in, in fact, it's coming. No, it's coming out tomorrow. Sorry, so tomorrow Thursday. Uh, stay tuned for that. So, if you visit my blog, Charles Phillips, the UK, you'll be able to see his guest post, which is literally talking about conversion optimization and his exact wow. case studies. And this is specifically I, for affiliate sites as well? Uh, for affiliate sites and, and e-commerce sites. Jeez. So because we actually hired him to do two of our client sites. Yeah. Um, and he took one of them, which is a massively high product item from 0.14% conversion rate to 0.22% conversion rate, which is a massive increase. It's like a 38% increase in revenue in the space of a week. Yeah. Because And that's and he's only about 25% finished of the way of the like kind of uh, implementation of what he wants to implement into the site Jeez. as well. So that's already massive, you know, and they're a company yeah. that are doing tens of thousands. And that'll, and that'll be posted well. on your, that um, guest post will be on your blog. Yeah, tomorrow. So just check out that. Well yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be checking that out. Yeah, he, uh, Kurt Phillips is really good. If anyone actually wants to kind of look at hiring him, it's Kurt at zero.com. So there you go. You can pay me for that kind of shout out there <laughs> yourself, Kurt. Um, next question comes from, I'm trying to locate one. Rosen via Vong, which is there a general anchor text ratio you guys go for when hitting your money sites, or is it smart to figure out what figure out only only after looking at your competitors' conversion rate? Yeah, uh, well, your competitors you know, I, I do pretty much the standard, which is don't be the black sheep. Look at what everybody else is doing and try and maintain around that. Mm-hmm. But I have my own set ratio in my head where I'm saying 95 percent of my links are com- you know look natural. They're really conversion. Look- uh, conversational anchor text, yeah. uh, brand, naked URL, that type of thing. Yeah. Click here, view this website. I here. try and use as little as that comparison as possible. Yeah, it's, and yeah. it's literally maybe even five percent. Yeah, because I'm going. Mine's like, I don't think we're five percent. Yeah, yeah. I, I li- we literally. I don't. I've been doing a new site recently with Soam, which is uh, only like two months old or something. Yeah, and we haven't used a single exact match uh, oh, wow. anchor text yet so far, and it's ranking page two after like four or five weeks of this site being live already. Jesus. Um, and literally, the only reason for that is because we're outdoing the competitors on such a high level when it comes to on page. Yeah. That our on page is like on point, like the content is at least two times the size of any anyone else in the entire cert. Yeah. Um, so our on page is what's going to rank us for keywords, and the links are literally just the power there. And obviously, in the long term, a lot of Google's algorithms, from my testing, especially Penguin, um, any kind of link algorithms, really, the easiest way for Google to kind of look at what sites are trying to manipulate the system, especially over the last kind of four or five years, has just been to look at anchor text ratios. Yeah. Because it's so easy. To and, and you know, the interesting thing is, you know, from their PPC, um, you know, the money, uh, the monthly search values, mm-hmm. they can just say, look, this anchor text, plug it into the monthly search value algorithm. Yeah. Does this get monthly searches? You're trying to rank for this key phrase. Yeah. Um, you know, r- rank you lower. Yeah. yeah so, you know, what I've tried to do to bypass that is to like, Throw the key phrase in, but remove a certain aspect of it and just yeah. mention it. So if it's like a, a particular blender, I would just say, oh, I got my blender from here. Or I yeah, got this yeah. amazing blender, the model of the blender, from here. Then used from here. Yeah, so yeah. actually the surrounding text, you can mention things. And then the actual linking text, you can then use natural. And that's a great way to kind of bypass that. Balance it all out. Um, well. Yeah, and, you know, and, and balance it out. But I still do think that, uh, and I personally pretty much all of my power links, PBNs, guest posts, mm-hmm. outreach, are somehow tagged in the phrase in some roundabout way, yeah. whether it's extremely partial or maybe a partial match. My, my favorite my favorite text at the moment is kind of, you can manipulate this all kinds of ways as well, is uh, this something review, because obviously it's my keyword that I'm trying to go yeah. after is something review. I'll put this review by XX, by whatever, by the yeah. name of the author, persona. and you can do, yeah, by the persona name, by the site name, you can do it the other way around, so you can have personas review of. You can do yeah. so. You can just have so many different anchor while still keeping the main two keywords that you're trying to keep inside there. Yeah, um, and that's like my favorite technique at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah awesome man. But literally, those strict ratios for me, and pretty much what I stick by, ninety-five percent of my stuff 
is, is as clean as a whistle. Yeah, and then exactly. all the power stuff. Well, Even the, PBN links, I don't use. Anchor, yeah, I don't use Active, Active, so yeah, that, yeah, that's interesting. It's pretty much every PBN link I've always done, um, unless it's to the point where I'm building like more than a hundred. Then I'm kind of thinking, okay, there's <laughs> no, I can sneak some. Yeah, yeah, okay, there's there's no there's no way I can do more um, anchor. I'm gonna have to start just building yeah. brand because the ratios are not quite there. Yeah, you yeah. know, I've built an Excel sheet where I'm tracking even the hidden links as well as all my real links. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, putting all the citations in as I receive them, forcing them in the Google index, you know, with Lightspeed index and that, that type of stuff, and then putting the anchor text in, um, yeah, and then all and the hidden links, and viewing the ratios that way, rather, yeah, than trying exactly. to do, rather than trying to guess. I actually yeah. do say less than 5% of my links are, um, exactly. are targeted. Or partial. Yeah, yeah. A, a, a partial match. Um, you know, one key thing I do as well is I never repeat an anchor text more than once. Okay. Um, not and I'm talking about this. I'm not talking about brand. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. I would literally the brand be, is fine. Yeah, yeah. naked Jurel brand. I, I'll repeat that all day long. But the stuff like this, this product review mm -hmm. from here, I would say this great product review or this awesome review or yeah. blah blah blah. I would never repeat the same word over and over, um, just from like a safety aspect and trying to make things as natural as possible. Um, and you know what I do to find the best possible natural is I look at like Buzzfeed. And look at their linking patterns and look at what the links they're getting in their link profile. And I see like so much actual com how people actually link, how journalists and real people interact on the internet. Yeah. And try and be more like that, especially if you're competing with you know the, the big boys on affiliate, because that's how they're linking as well. Because the same type of journalists that are writing on there are, are writing for like, you know, Tom's hardware, that type of stuff yeah, anyway. So sites. um, you know. Generally, those ratios. Um, and, and remember, if you put your if you put a URL into Majestic or Ahrefs, the anchor ratios that are in Majestic or Ahrefs yeah. might not necessarily be right at all. Because obviously, Majestic and Ahrefs don't pick up the same amount of links often. Like, well, they don't pick up the same amount of links that another site do. So, uh, sorry, that Google do. Yeah. So, hidden PBNs, kind of links that Ahrefs just hasn't indexed or anything. Yeah. It can actually massively change the kind of anchor ratios yes. that you see on the site. So don't just go basing your anchor ratios off of what your competitors have got in AHF Majestic. Yeah. It could be swinging one way, it could be swinging yeah, the other in like a huge it's, amount. It's literally funny. With me, um, I have, you know, for example, one of my websites, I have an aged um, auction domain, yeah. which is a hidden through one. Yeah. And then I have a .co version of my domain, which is a hidden through one as well. So every single month, I'm link building to all three of these domains, my main domain, my auction hidden through one, and my other brand version hidden through one. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, people would look at my link profile and think, "Hang on a sec, he's not using any exact match." <laughs> and even when he is, it's very minimal. But then you know, they don't see all the hidden links that are there. Um, yeah. And by doing things through a hidden through, I can get away with doing things like EDU connections that I might have, which aren't entirely relevant, but I don't want people to steal them. Yeah. <laughs> just running through the hidden through one, and obviously, then taking it a step further, making the hidden through one if viewed. Um, by a link checker, you know, points at their website, <laughs> kind of, kind of helps as well. So like, Hang on a sec, what's going on here? <laughs> That's so, uh, good for making it loads to a completely different one. Yes, and it's so. So if you're going to look at people's um, ones, that they could be SEOs as well. They could be doing the same techniques. So, yeah, if you have a ratio in mind of what's safe, and you're looking at a good few of these, you could can kind of get a feel. Yeah, but I do think that you have to, you know. Be conscious of what you're doing, and you can't just throw shit at the wall and rely on Majestic. You need an Excel sheet of every type of link building activity that you're doing, so that you can then attach dates to link building, and you can start seeing what kind of stuff is working for your website and stuff. So, yeah, I think link building tracking and activity is what everyone should be doing. Yeah, um, oh yeah, we do it for every single one of our products. You know, it's good because then, and, and, and I just want to expand on that a little bit yeah. as well. Um, whenever you uh, sell an affiliate website. Yeah, they that's, will always that's, ask that's you what I was going to say. Whenever you got a link tracking sheet, so yeah, like most most people when you sell one will always want some kind of sheet for them to be able to go through and see all your backlinks. Yeah, especially if it's PBN links and you're selling it as a PBN link powered site. Yes, uh, they'll they'll always. Want you no, know, that. that it's key. Yeah, um, and something that a lot of people don't do, and they're literally just building ten PBN links and ten random links and yeah. not even tracking. There's probably half these guys buying PBN links and then like six weeks later the PBNs going offline and stuff. <laughs> they don't even know because they're not tracking. Yeah, um, you know, I think that's key. Uh, and also an extension of this uh, question as well comes from Sean Bird. He asks, do you use synonyms in your PBN architects for your money site keywords? E.g., if the money keyword is best tent, would you use most popular tent, recommended tent? Uh, and have you seen any good results or that much uh, every time? Um, so, so, so basically, I think it, I think it is 
fantastic idea to do those kind of synonym keywords. Yeah. Um, a lot of people do it on, on page to try and rank because obviously Google sees on page if the yes. keyword's different. But doing, uh, like for example, if your keyword is best tent, then you want keywords like the best tent, re the best tent reviews by, you want uh, the m the top recommended tents because obviously yeah. that's getting your top keyword and your best one. All of those kind of keywords in together. Maybe not necessarily just having your anchors as best tent recommended tent. Yeah, that's a really big tent. unnatural. Yeah, that's like, unnatural. If you're doing yeah. this, but if, but if you're kind of using those word. keywords in with other ones, yeah. then it's really powerful. Because you got to remember how, how do people talk on the internet going back to things yeah. like BuzzFeed and stuff. Exactly. People, you know, insert things in different parts and link differently. And, you know, put new conversations. There's some people out there that link with like eight words and stuff. <laughs> some people that link with like three words. Yeah. So you can really mess around and you know find what works for you. Yeah. Um, and and you really want to make sure that you're looking as natural as possible. That's the entire point. I think the 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 thing that people get confused about in modern day black hat SEO is that the best black hats in the world right now are the ones that you wouldn't even be able to tell that their back profile yeah. was black hat. Yeah, that's definitely. literally the the best kind of SEO you can the best kind of black hat SEO or grey hat SEO you can do yeah. is to make it look white hat. Um, so obviously that is very much so when you're choosing your anchor texts to make sure those anchor texts look like they've actually been written by a person rather than they've been written to purposefully manipulate the algorithm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, so I hope that answers Sean's question yeah. as well. There's uh, we have a few more questions as well coming in. Uh, the next question comes from Johnny Johnson, who asks, "Have you, and I know this one is good for you as well. Uh, have you got any tips for local SEO? I'm in Hungary and don't have access to .hepbns, but I've got plenty of English age domains. Can I use them? Um, so can he use?" Foreign, um, can you place foreign languages on his English PBNs? I, th I think it's, uh, has, have you got any tips for foreign SEO? So I know you're yeah. actually, I know you do quite a lot of foreign yeah. SEO. Maybe it is English foreign SEO, but it's everyone you do some other yeah. stuff. Uh, as well as, can you use English links for other languages? Yeah, you know, in, um, in, in Casino, for example, the words for Casino in different languages, we've gone as far as putting three different languages on one PBN. Um, on you know, and we're just literally putting really high quality posts and linking out properly, and we've had ranking increases. And to this day, they are still indexed. I wouldn't probably recommend making all these multilingual websites, yeah. but they do work. And I think if you're going to do one, do one or the other. So what yeah. we were doing is we were putting Swiss content on, um, you know, on. Um, so we would so we, so we so so for example this this website that points our Nordic money site was an English domain and yeah. we chose to go for this particular uh, language yeah. and we made the whole content around this PBN this language even though all the links coming in were like English and stuff yeah so I don't think you should do what I did where I was doing all these different languages but I do think that and I do know that it you can still rank. I, I can actually give a really good example, and I'm going to out someone now, <laughs> unfortunately. Yes. So I don't know who the owner of this website, but if you go to Google Sweden, which is Google.se, and you put an online casino into Google.se, there's a site that's ranking number one there that uses majority only English links, but yeah. it's ranking for an English term, so online casino is an English term, uh, but it's ranking in Google Sweden. Yeah. Uh, so it's a .se site that is in Swedish, but yeah. they've just built all of their all of their backlinks as and they're really high anchor text and stuff as and well. And they've been working for a long time as well. Yeah, yeah, they've been working for a long time. And yeah. pretty much every Google there was actually one time where they they dropped off for three days, mm -hmm. but they came back online in the previous position. <laughs> and I was thinking that they must have some kind of connection as well. <laughs> and the same affiliate that that owns that website does the same in Canada as well. Really? The website is almost an exact clone of this <laughs> website, and it was down for three days. Within three days, he was back online at the previous spot. Jeez. And, you know, I think I've spoke to this guy before at a, a London affiliate conference, yeah. and he's literally like the weirdest guy ever, <laughs> and he's like really secretive and stuff. And he's like, he must be like 25 years old. He lives in Monaco, makes absolute millions. <laughs> I'm not but surprised. All of a sudden, he was able to get back in Google in three days. This is pretty crazy. And doing the dodgiest, you know, which yeah, his link profile is insane. Like, it yeah. has like a 25 percent anchor ratio yeah, for online casino. Or something. Yeah, and there's a, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he, you know, he was mentioning all sorts of things about up to 16 through one redirects. Um, you can actually, uh, if you search links and his website, you can actually find PBNs. Yeah, yeah, related to it. Um, yeah. it's that, a link, that, link minus site. Yeah, yeah that point Google. if you. You can find PBNs that point to a 301 that point to his website mm -hmm. that is a that is a hidden 301. If you put them put that hidden 301 in 
Majestic, and we're talking, you know, thousands of PBNs. Jeez. Some even exact match anchor text. Yeah. So, um, no, a lot of it is exact yeah. match. I mean, even even on the tier one group, yeah, and even one even even, even, that even stuff like um, compromised compromised websites as well, just randomly putting yeah. the anchor text in as well. Yeah, so safe links. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, so literally, links work. Links are a ranking factor. Um, to, to the guy who asked that question, you can literally get an English domain and put all your hungry content on there and rank for hungry phrase, phrases. Um, but don't start putting English content on there, or your, or start putting your hungry links on PBNs that link to your client because yeah. then you're reducing the quality score of these links that already point to your client. Yeah. Well, so if, if you're going to compromise your English PBNs, you know, just to rank a few hungry websites. That's not really not, worth yeah, it. Yeah, it's not worth um, it. At all. And obviously, try and find domains in your own language as well. Mm -hmm. um, if yeah, I think you know, that's one thing as well. That's one thing as well. If he, and, and I think, uh, well, yeah, go ahead. yeah, I was just thinking that he he's a citizen of that country, so he can register the domains. Yeah, and this probably has minimal competition in these. You just know, do expired scrapes for dot Yeah, domains. just literally do expired scrapes. Yeah, um, you probably build and expired yeah. expired domains. Uh, don't have the same link loss as they're doing yeah. currently but, in English search in comparison to Hungry search. So if you went and built, if you went and registered yeah. 25 expired Hungry domains, yeah. then it would be very likely that you'd have a lot more benefit in Hungary than if you were to register 25 in the UK. Yeah. And in the UK. I think, I think the algorithms it, are different. The, the issue comes with some regulations in some countries, like there's some African countries where you literally have to be a citizen, yeah, provide yeah. your passport and things to even and get you have to register business. Yeah, yeah. Well. yeah, yeah. And in Australia, yeah. We, you know, we've had to go out there and register a business just to do, <laughs> just to have this as domain. Yeah, and there is obviously black hat ways of doing that, um, which we did, which I have done, and I don't recommend people do because we got in trouble for doing it. Which is literally just put someone else's business code in, <laughs> and you can still register the domain. I don't recommend you guys doing that. That um, might be a little bit fraud there. Yeah, that, because that is illegal, and we had faced legal issues, and our website was taken down, and yeah. we had to start again at the .com. So, you know, maybe look into how you can acquire domains in your own country legally, um, so the, uh, the the police don't come after you. Um, Daniel Smith asks, so you can use GSA on foreign Google? Um, I don't recommend it yeah. still, just because, like, you, I have seen some sites ranking in weird Nordic countries yeah. and like uh, other countries in Asia and stuff using GSA but almost always when you actually track those sites um, like straight away with it within a few months they do just tank so if you want to do churn and burn then in some of the foreign language search that you can but you'll have to analyze them and see if what yeah. what kind of links people are using yeah maybe just look at casino right. phrases and bingo phrases yeah exactly like that. and like weight loss and, like yeah, and any kind of like spammy niches that you can see uh, see what links they're using because the majority of the time there will be black hat links, and yeah. then just try and manipulate, or sorry, try and use the same as what they're doing, but on a bigger scale, on a better scale. When I was looking at the South American service, there is one big guy who's doing law lead gen, and yeah. he literally must have like 20 EMDs in every single possible law SERP. Um, you know, one of his researchers, all the, all the South American countries, and he just dominates, and it's literally really low quality PBNs with yeah. spun content. It's, it's like uh, so, Sebastian yeah, so, Johnson. I don't know if you remember him. Yeah, he he, he, he was he wasn't even an SEO. He was a developer that got personally attacked by Matt Cutts uh, because he was ranking in every Nordic country for payday loans. Yeah, and he basically he he made like uh, in in a different language he make pigpaydayloans.de. Yeah, you know rooster payday loans. I think, that's, I, think I do I do remember that case too. Yeah. And it was, it was shared on Twitter as well. He, he, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Because, yeah, uh, because every, was, every single one of his sites got attacked. Yeah, after he. Tweeted at Matt Kitts or something, and Matt Kitts just went to town on all the sites that he was doing, uh, and he didn't really ever do much after that with SEO because he's a web developer and he's making enough money other, out from there. But obviously, those sites that he did have ranking there, he ranked for payday loans in different language SERPs. Yeah, uh, but for like about seven or eight different countries for months, so that's a considerable amount of earnings from yeah. just that. Yeah, wow. yeah. <laughs> he's a really clever guy, actually. So I suggest checking out. So hopefully that um. That big that answers your question there <laughs> has been a bit informative. Um, Johnny Johnson related to uh, yes, I can find many expired .hu domains, but I thought that drop domains are big no-no these days. Uh, that's why I went for H domains. Uh, basically, it's just because of a, it's a different algorithm for Hungary than it yeah. is to Google, UX, and Google. UK, yeah, another thing, drop domains aren't aren't a no-no. How yeah. how how they're being set up and the fact that you can't find good domains anymore yeah. is why people are moving to auctions. Um, and obviously, why people are just buying PBNs because the, you know the people who are scraping them are literally the second they become expired, yeah. they're picking them up, yeah. and it's impossible to get good ones. Yeah. 
if you're in Hungary, you can literally, you're probably going to be like one of like, yeah, one of a hundred. Very few people are escaping Hungary. Yeah, so you can literally get some killer domains yeah. um, and drop domains still work and they work fine. It's just that you can't get, it's not worthwhile waiting 30 days to rank if the domains aren't even that great anyway. When yeah, you just exactly. pick up a good auction domain yeah. around similar stats, you know. And, and it's literally, it is, you, but you, the linking time that you have to do in Google UK, yeah. I'm not necessarily sure you would have the same kind of linking time that you'd have to yeah. do in Hungary. So I think you'd have to kind of do some testing with the expired domains and see the best way to kind of use them and things. And if you do need to wait that 30 to 40 days like you would in Google UK and US and et cetera at the moment with the English level algorithm. Yeah. Um, so just do some testing because picking up an expired domain, I'm not sure about Hungary costs, but it's like $12 or something. Yeah. And uh, sticking it on like a host like EDN or something just to see how it ranks and stuff, see how it does. Uh, just test them out and kind of invest a few hundred dollars and see where you get. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously that will be a lot cheaper than buying the Asia domains from a different kind of language and potentially it'd be more effective to have a .hu domain. Than yeah, definitely. It would, be, it would be more effective. Yeah. Um, there's, there's more questions there in the chat. Yeah. Uh, the next one comes from Free Live TV, which basically asks, what are your views on effective uh, on the effectiveness of YouTube videos and YouTube channels for adding link value and value in general to your website? Because apparently um, he's basically seen value added in the SERPs from having a YouTube channel or YouTube videos linking to your site. Um, I think it is. I think YouTube. In, in I, sense, I, we do use YouTube videos as yeah. diversity links. Yeah, as um, diversity links. Yeah. You might not see a link juice benefit directly from all these like, profile links, maybe no follow, yeah. or these, you know. Um, from video descriptions and things, but I do think because it's YouTube owned, they might put a weighted score on the fact that you yeah. you're probably a real person if you have a Google My Business profile mm -hmm. that's verified with a real physical location with citations and stuff to back it up, yeah. and you have a YouTube channel with active viewers, subscribers, and videos. But you know, all of that kind of stuff is stuff that people like to throw out, but there's no real hard data on that. Yeah. So 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 while as we say, oh, it's great to have all these signals and stuff. <laughs> Realistically, links are such a high ranking factor that to go out there and make YouTube channels and stuff when like 10 PBN links would be better, for example. Um, and I think YouTube videos are more from a brand standpoint. If you have a lot of stuff researching your product um, and demonstrating it, have testimonials and things that you can display on your website, put put them on there. Yeah. Make a YouTube channel and, and post them on there. And you can potentially use those YouTube videos. Uh, well, you can use them for rich media on your site. Yeah. And obviously you can, Parasite, as we spoke earlier. Exactly. And you, and you can actually rank inside YouTube SERPs yeah. for more keywords. And obviously, because you have the link back from your uh, YouTube video, and if people just randomly click on your video from YouTube search when they search for the keywords, uh, that could be a potential another traffic source for your yeah. site. And we actually do use YouTube videos for diversity links. So what we do is we we'll make a YouTube video, upload it to our channel or whatever, and yeah, uh, and also just turn turn the light on because it's a bit dark on the screen now, with uh, it turning a bit dark outside. So you can see our beautiful face a bit more, and that's just made my eyes kind of go there. Um, yeah, so I actually make a YouTube video. Not number one, obviously, we get the more traffic from YouTube. We get the diversity link, which then I'll actually upload that video to like ten to fifteen other uh, other video sites, and obviously then you can link back from those other video sites, things like Vimeo. Um, you know all sorts of other sites out there. Uh, you can actually use those for more diverse links, and some of them are do follow as well. And it will just be the URL as anchor text. Yeah. So it'll just be that YouTube. It will just be your URL as anchor text. Obviously, helps diversify your anchor text profile even more, um, as well as like generating traffic, using it for parasite SEO. So YouTube is obviously a very good platform for SEOs to use and manipulate to get even more quality links, and obviously yeah. more. Like yeah, but yeah. It, it would increase conversions. So when I go on a website and I can see the actual person that I could be dealing with, yeah. you know, if it's an accountant or whatever, and they show me the team, everything they do, testimonials, then it's yeah. like a no brainer versus everyone else that just literally has text. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. from that aspect, it's 100% worth having one, let alone if Google gives you more value and things. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'd recommend it regardless, even, even if the SEO benefits are minimal. Yeah. Um, from a conversion standpoint and earnings, it's, you know, it's a must. Uh, Johnny Johnson asks, I've seen many foreign SERPs where there are only one, uh, two or even one site on the three on the map pack. Um, is this deliberate or just means that nobody else did proper optimization for maps? Um, well, the map pack, so he's saying that he looks and sometimes there's just one website or three. Yeah, what, what one or two website on the on the supposed oh, to be three map pack. On the supposed to be three, yeah. three pack. I wouldn't know exactly why it's doing that, um, but for example, certain searches the quality score of the other profiles can be questionable. For example, stuff that hasn't been claimed, 
used to show up and you could just start claiming stuff. Yeah. But now it's almost like Google is saying, well, we're not sure if this person is going to be a good fit for someone yeah, else. Exactly. Don't include them in the free pack. Yeah. Or it could literally be, you know, someone just made this, haven't verified it. Um, you know, they don't have a website. Yeah. There's, all, there's, there's so many potential reasons. I'm <laughs> not really sure why that's a question. <laughs> um, but yeah, if it, it, it doesn't mean, it, it, it could very well mean that it's a lot easier to rank for that phrase and you yeah. should make a website around it. Um, look at the monthly search volumes if you if if you're if you're thinking it's not worthwhile if you're thinking oh there's only one website on here is this even worthwhile making a making a website and profile here if there's no businesses even do business yeah, here exactly. um, just look at the search volumes yeah look at the search words, volumes yeah. rather than looking at how many people are on the snack pack look at the search volumes and look at the actual websites as well because if there's loads of businesses on there but all of them are barely ranking and barely doing SEO. Don't let the amount of businesses that are you know when you can when you actually expand the snap back, you can actually look at how all, all the unverified profiles and how many people in total yeah. are actually providing that service. And don't be put off if there's like you know, fifty in London and stuff. If you put a count, there's so many Google posts. <laughs> you get to the bottom, there's so many just like random guys <laughs> with just like a mobile phone number, like the most shadiest Facebook pages ever. Um, again, don't let that put you off. Just look at the actual websites. Yeah, you know, because yeah. if, if if the I see it as if the website is weak, and there's lots of people on the um, on, on the snack pack, you can still get on the snack pack, even though there's lots of them, because you can rank organically number one and have the best possible profile ever, and yeah. then you'll slowly creep up just because you rank number one and you have the best possible Google business page. You have the most reviews, the best optimization. You know, you're just the yeah. best kind of option for Google out there to actually yeah. rank site yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it for all the questions that you guys have answered is for this live stream. I know we said we were going to do two hours, but we did do pretty long live stream for this yeah, one. Yeah, no, it's really good. Some really good questions. Yeah, really good questions as well. Um, um, and I, again, make sure you're in uh, the PBN, the proper PBN group. All you have to do is go to the PBN.community. That's the URL, and you'll be able to redirect that check through there. So you can ask us questions and also obviously see us uh, on the next stream and be up to date with all the other information yeah. there. Um, so yeah, it was really good. Thanks yeah. for being on once again, James. No this problem. has been Thank episode number four. As yeah, well. think have have me on. It's been uh, yeah. great to answer all the questions and really, you know, expanding ideas and stuff. And you know, I take so much away from these just being able to implement half of this stuff. <laughs> anyway, it's worth going on. Let alone the value that we get. Yeah, so. The creative juices flowing and everything. Yeah, as well. but yeah. Well, thanks again, Charles, and yeah. uh, until the next one, guys. And like I said, just make sure you get on the P the prop PBN group so that you can see when our next live streams are, and also ask us any questions that you make sure that you are obviously getting featured in uh, every question that we can answer because you get priority over people in the live stream on these things. Yeah. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next uh, the next episode, which will probably be in about two weeks' time or so. I've been Charles Float. This has been the beautiful James Gregory. Have a uh, have an awesome night. Cheers, guys.